Hello, it's Jason Pame, Cool Banker Dean Harper Realtors. Welcome back to Pro Tips from a Lender with our special guest, Miss Jen Bailey from Legacy Mutual. In our first video, I mentioned her very unique background uh, being working with the FBI. So with that, I thought it was a good idea to have Jennifer kind of share some uh, stories. Pretty sure she got some crazy ones. Uh, so Jennifer, thank you for joining us again today and uh, got any good, juicy stories for us? I do. Thanks for having me on again, Jason. Yeah, so I investigated mortgage fraud alongside the FBI for a little over five years. And believe it or not, I found fraud in about 90% of the files I investigated. Shocking, <laughs> right? Everyone was doing fraud. And I was investigating 2008, the crash, a lot of fraud leading up to that. And we investigated files going all the way back to 2001, another time when fraud was high. So everyone was committing fraud from the loan officers to realtors, appraisers, title companies, the borrowers, everyone. And uh, But believe it or not, the number one suspect that was doing the most fraud was the loan officers. So my role now. So it's really cool to flip script and go over and be a loan officer role and be able to do it the right way, help my clients avoid getting in trouble and guide them into how to get a home without committing any fraud because some people do it on accident and don't realize it. For example, one of the most common types of fraud is a gift. They say their family, mom and dad are gonna give them a gift to buy a house, but really it's a loan. They plan to pay their parents back. Well, I have to talk to them about that and say, hey, this has to be a gift. You cannot plan to repay them. You're gonna sign a letter saying this is a gift. So that's one that some would do on accident, just not knowing that's fraud, right? So I can guide them to make sure they don't get in trouble, realtor, nobody gets in trouble, and I guide them through it. Um, but yeah, I was investigating some pretty high profile clients because I did the whole United States. California and Florida were my biggest clients. Countrywide was one of the bigger culprits, <laughs> a lot of fraud. And in California and Florida, I had some very high profile clients. I can't say who, but there was someone that is at the top of the food chain in our in, in our world that uh, was doing an investment scam fraud. So what he would do is he'd apply for multiple loans at the same time to buy different houses. But if you did it in a short period of time, this was back in the day before we had better technology. But if you did it in a short period of time with a bunch of lenders, like on the same day, they wouldn't know that all of them are doing a different loan because it wouldn't hit the credit report until after closing. So someone could go out and if they qualify for one house, but they're going out and buying 10. And really they don't qualify to buy 10, right? Um, so that's what this person was doing. And he was doing it in multiple states, this investment scam fraud. And I found it and uh, turned it over to the FBI and they take it from there. And the penalties can be crazy. I mean, you can go to jail, you can have hundreds of thousands of dollars in penalties, obviously also losing all the home. So it's for sure not worth it. Um, but there was so much fraud. The crazy thing is that the FBI couldn't prosecute everybody because I we were finding so much that they just had to prioritize and go, okay, who's the, who's the worst? Who are the repeat offenders? Let's go after that. Um, but anyway, now we are seeing some mortgage fraud coming back, which is great because I'm being able to be a resource for so many people in my industry on how to help and how to avoid it and how to spot it. Um, like people creating fake employment letters. I see this a lot. Um, someone moving out, someone right now moving from Florida to here, and she just created her, her own offer letter from a job here in Texas to buy a house here in Texas. Um, and I was able to spot it and say, hey, look, like, I know you wrote this letter. <laughs> this is not a real letter. <laughs> this isn't even a good fake letter. Not uh, a good fake letter. I don't want you to go to jail. I don't want your realtor to go to jail. I don't want me to go to jail. And so I was able to talk her into, hey, just go get a job. Like, go, go interview get a real offer letter. It's okay. It'll work. It happens all the time. Your profession is in high demand here. So anyway, I was glad that um, I can spot it and protect people from accidentally doing fraud or intentionally doing fraud, right? Yeah, things have definitely changed since back before the 2008 crash. And uh, back then, in case you guys don't remember, uh, the lenders weren't required to having documentation. It was like the no doc assignment. Uh, the government was literally pushing everybody deserves a home. Uh, let's just turn this into a wild west. And surprise, surprise, people took advantage of it when the lender, there was no penalty on the lender if that loan went bust. 
because the lenders were just packaging these loans up and selling them off to the secondary market for investments. Like teachers' retirement fund investments were buying up all a bunch of these packaged up mortgages. So yeah. there was no penalty for the lenders. They didn't care. They yeah. weren't required to document anything. They were just trying to get as many people on a home as could be, whether they qualified or not. Because I've heard a lot of stories where they were like doing the, you make how much per month? Wink, wink. Uh, you, and they were getting those loans that way. And it that's what led to the crash. And I know a lot of stuff has changed now to prevent that from ever happening. And mm -hmm. when, I'm, when I'm counseling my clients, um, I don't know if I've ever told you this part, Jen, that I get a little, little crass and I say... Um, the underwriting process is kind of like a rectal exam. <laughs> it is uncomfortable. It is intrusive, but it's necessary. And yeah. the more you relax and just get that lender the information, the smoother the process is going to go. There's a reason they need all this information. Yeah. So yeah, feel free to use that. Yeah, I love that. So mine's a little different, not as gory, but just as intense. So I say... We're basically going to need a blood sample in your firstborn to get you this house. So warning, just work with us. We're going to over communicate. We're going to help you get into this house. We're going to close on time, but just, you know, we're going to need your baby. Like no it's big deal. All to prevent mortgage fraud. Right. Right. Yep. And if there's any, if you have anyone on here that's really interested in learning how all this arose as well as what came of it, my favorite, one of my favorite movies is The Big Short. It does a great job covering this. And there's this interview done by NPR on This American Life called The Giant Pool of Money. And in this, they did this, gosh, right after their crash. Um, it was one of the best one hour videos I ever saw. And it talked about how there was just so much money in the market to be invested that that's where they started creating these terrible mortgage-backed securities with loans that were no income, no doc. And then it ultimately is what caused the crash. So two great things, the giant pool of money on This American Life and The Big Short, which is a fun movie to watch, both really accurate, great ones to, to get everyone up to speed on what happened because understanding history helps us do better in the future. So I always love going back to history for that. Exactly. Any other crazy stories you got for us today? Um, I had a broker in Florida. So he was a realtor that owned his own brokerage in Florida. And he was counseling or not, I don't know if you'd say counseling. A lot of his clients didn't know he was doing this, but he was fabricating the documents to give to the lender behind the borrowers. Uh, yeah. Back. So I had a lot of borrowers cause I'd interview, I'd have to interview everyone involved and the borrowers they're losing their home. So they're sad. They can't afford their mortgage and they didn't understand it because the lender and broker were in cahoots together and they didn't explain to the client, Hey, this is a $6,000 a month payment. And you make $2,000 a month, right? Like they didn't know. They just trusted them. The borrower just trusted them. And they were creating fabricated documents to get these houses sold. And this happened all over Florida. I even knew a lender that used to be a good friend of mine in Texas that moved to Florida and started doing this. And I was like, what are you doing? Like people are losing their homes. And so it was very sad. So many people I interviewed were losing their homes. But yeah, they're, Florida and California were two big states where the brokers and the the realtors and the lenders would be in cahoots and they would just get a bunch of people under contract and buy a home that couldn't afford those homes. And then they'd lose the home and not understand why, because they trusted the professionals. So key here is to be with a great professional, a great realtor like Jason and a lender like myself that can guide you through the process and protect you. Yeah. Integrity matters. Uh, when you're trying to choose a realtor or a lender, you want people that you feel comfortable that they're not trying to scam you um yeah people tell me all the time it's like holy crap you just say what you what you mean and uh, it's refreshing and, it's, and i definitely appreciate that and yeah. you have to be able to trust the people that are advising you and realize well some people don't realize that realtors we have a code of ethics that we are obligated to look out for our clients needs above our own does every realtor do that I'm not naive. I know some realtors are like used car salesmen and they're just trying to tell you whatever they can do to get a sale. And I, I'm definitely not that person. And I know Jennifer's not that person either. So 
yeah, if you're looking for somebody with some ethics, uh, and definitely with hearing Jennifer's background working with the FBI, chasing down unethical people, feel free to reach out to us. Um, my contact information will be on the final screen, and I'll make sure I have Jennifer's information there. Um, what? How? What's the best way people to reach reach you, Miss Jen? Great question. So I give my cell phone number to all of my clients because I think that it just makes it easier for them to be able to reach me quick. And if it has to be an evening or a weekend rather than having an office number. So I share my cell phone number. It's 512-507-0063. The best way to reach me is honestly a text because I'm on the phone all day long. <laughs> In the same way, people send me an email and I'm like, good God, especially right now, political ad season My I spend probably 20, 30 minutes a day just deleting garbage emails. And sometimes those important emails I, I don't catch. So texting is definitely the best way to reach me at 210-254-4425. All right. That's going to do it for today's pro tip from a lender, unless uh, Miss Jen's got anything else to share with us. No, no. I love what we covered. I think it's an interesting topic and it will help a lot of people stay out of trouble. Exactly. All right. Stay tuned for the next one. Take care now. Appreciate it.